What's up everybody, Sujan Patel here. Today I wanna to talk to you about six ways to double the revenue from your email marketing. Yes, email marketing is not dead, contrary to pretty much every article written in 2017 and 18. It still works, in fact, it's one of the best ways to communicate um, because frankly, people still use email. I know I looked a lot of time on email. So let's jump into it. Tip number one is use FOMO, right? People are busy. Um, people love deals. Black Friday works so well because it ends on a certain day and it starts on a certain day. Um, so this is why uh, launches work so well. So you can do it by using a limited quantity, first 100 customers um, that buy this or first 100 people or limited time. So those are two different levers, but FOMO is a huge thing. Uh, again, this is why launches work so well when you're launching courses or anything like that. Like when you launch something, there's a lot of buzz around it for a short period of time and this burst creates a, a kind of a ripple and an attention grabbing effect. So definitely use FOMO um, in your email marketing efforts because you'll get more revenue. Number two is to segment your list and start new subscribers on an email drip sequence. This is really important because you want new subscribers first and foremost to get used to um, hearing from you. Maybe you have some really great content you want to share with them. I know for me, some of my best content I've written has not come from me this year or this month. It's come from like two, three years ago. And it's something that like, is really, maybe really important, really stuck with our audience or whatnot. And I want to make sure new customers and new email subscribers see that stuff. So that's why great drip sequence is, is, is key. The other thing is uh, you want to make sure people get used to hearing from you before you start sending your latest email. Uh, and so we use a software called drip.com. Really, really awesome. But most email marketing softwares can do this now. Really, really easy. Now, talk about segmentation for a second. Um, you may want to segment people that like your customers. Maybe you want to segment people who are blog subscribers or uh, a webinar attendees. Why this is important is that like I would never say the same thing to my customers as I would to my email subscribers. And people who have signed up for a webinar maybe have joined the webinar and heard me talk, they know me a little bit more. Um, so I can, I can ask them to do stuff for me. Whereas like, if you just subscribe to my blog tomorrow, like today or yesterday, versus you watched a webinar, uh, I can't ask you as a new subscriber, like, hey, do me a favor and like leave a review here. But as a webinar, I may wanna get them on a demo, I may be able to sell them. So um, don't forget about that. Number three is to upsell your list and your customers. Look, people are so afraid of selling these days on their emails, uh, but first and foremost, it's okay to sell. People have opted into your email list. They better make sure they have opted in, first of all, but make sure that, you know, the, the people who have, you can sell them. And yes, some people are not gonna like it, but I don't know about you, but I don't run a charity, right? Uh, I'm here in business to make money and generate wealth for the business. So um, don't be afraid to sell. Now, make sure your sell to add, um, add value ratio is really, really high. So I usually do uh, a five to one. So five of my emails, every five emails, I think I can sell once. Um, now, or I can ask my customers to do something. So that's kind of the ratio I stick to. This way um, people are one, used to me asking for something, right? You're on my list. You better do something for me as well. I'm creating content and spending hours and hours of my days, weeks to do this. It's okay to go and ask somebody to do something. So don't be afraid. Speaking of asking for your users to do something, your email list to do something, you can ask them and you should ask them for referrals and for reviews. So for my email, for my customers who have been around for six, six or more months, um, and they've sent a certain amount of campaigns. Again, I know this from segmenting uh, my audience or email list. I will ask them to leave a review. I'll ask them for feedback. Or when I launch something new, I'll ask them for shares. I'll ask them to participate in the conversation. Um, this is really, really key because one, you want to engage your list. So many times in marketing, people are like, they're talking at you. They're not, or they may be talking to you, but it's a one-way conversation. Don't forget people can reply or get involved in that conversation. And when you have an engaged list, you essentially have better open rates, better deliverability, and more sales. Number five, mobile first emails, please. What I mean by this is read, 
or open your damn emails on a mobile device, uh, especially the ones that are like go out in the morning or go out at night. Why this is important is because I don't know about you, but I'm not checking email on my computer at 6 a.m. I'm on my phone. I'm not checking email on my computer at 11 p.m. I'm on my phone. Uh, and most people, the trend is going that the smartphones are getting so powerful that you can do a lot of stuff on your phone. So first and foremost, just make sure they're good. And this means you have to reduce the design. Um, you may need to reduce the amount of, of links. You may want to remove some images or whatever, but focus on mobile first and make sure it's actually a good experience. Because if it's not, you're going to see your click-through rates plummet and your deliverability starts to decrease. And you know, it's just a chain effect that really m makes your email list worthless. All right, and the last tip I wanna share is to have one focus for every email you do. There's so many emails I've seen that are like, hey, you know, I'm on a newsletter and I send you, uh, there's four links with the social media buttons and like um, all those other details. Well, first of all, if you're sending a piece of content, and you link to your Facebook page, why the crap do I care about your Facebook page or your Twitter or your LinkedIn page? Why don't you ask me to share it on Facebook? That's, remember, you can ask your customers or your email list to do stuff. So uh, just minimize the stuff in your, in your email. Minimize all the clutter and the distraction, right? Think of your email as a landing page. Everything above the fold should lead to one thing, right? You never on a landing page have 15 call to actions. You have four links to go somewhere and you never above the fold link to your freaking Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter pages. So why are you doing that in your emails? That's it guys. This is definitely gonna make you increase your revenue and, and really help you generate more revenue from your email marketing tactics uh, or your email marketing efforts. And if you have any tips or questions or comments, leave them below. Till next time, take care.